The Tom Bin Synapse is a classic backpack and a design that's lasted through the ages. It's optimized for comfortable carry and a ton of organizational functionality as well. So I'm excited to jump into all those details in this review. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, and if you're new to the channel, we love helping people optimize their travel experience with reviews and guides, just like this one. So if you're new, consider subscribing. Let's jump right into the Tom Min Synapse 25. At the time of this review, the Synapse is available in two sizes, the original 19 liter version and the 25 liter version that we have going on right here. Overall, a lot of similarities between those two. We're gonna be more focused on the 25 liter version for this review. These come in a variety of colors and fabrics. There are so many internal liner colors and external colors, too many to name, so be sure to go check those out on the product listing page if you wanna see all the options. They're always changing as well. Our fabric is the 525 Denier Ballistic Nylon, and our internal liner is the 200D Halcyon Fabric in Island Blue. Ballistic Nylon is a great choice for durability concerning the exterior of packs. A lot of the most durable packs we've tested get up to 1000D or 1680D in the Ballistic Nylon category. However, 525D will definitely do as well. On the interior, the Halcyon liner is similar to Dyneema branded fabrics. However, it's not the official Dyneema branded version. Technically, the fabric is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. There's a lot of terminology going here, but with this fabric that Tom Bin uses, it's not quite as crunchy or swishy as traditional Dyneema branded fabrics that we have tested in the past. So we found that it feels a little bit softer to the touch. It feels a little bit more rubbery. It's not as swishy and crunchy. And with that ripstop pattern going on on the liner itself, there's not as much room to leave crinkles inside of the pack as well, which we've seen with a lot of other sailcloth products on the market. There's also a 400 denier version that can be used on the exterior of the pack in lieu of that 525D ballistic nylon. Okay, that was a bit of a tirade on fabrics, but they are important. And we found that they can really make or break the overall experience of using a pack. From a branding perspective, you'll see a simple apparent Tom Bin logo that's pasted on the back. The shape of the pack is round and it definitely has that turtle-like shape going on that affects the functionality a little bit, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video. I personally do not like the look of this pack. However, beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. We polled our Instagram audience to see the results. If you wanna be involved in future polls, be sure to head over and follow at PackHacker on Instagram. We'd love to have you there to help with things like this. Wrapping up the materials list, there's a bunch of other things going on that are of high quality. We have number 10 and number eight, YKK AquaGuard water repellent zippers. Three brands of buckles for some reason, Duraflex, Nexus, and Wujin, all solid brands for plastic and metal hardware. EVA foam for comfort, there's a bunch of high density padding going on around this pack. And there's a Drylax Aerospacer mesh upper backing. Basically, this is the mesh back panel that helps with comfort and breathability. Overall, some solid and durable materials coming together to make this pack really great. If anything doesn't hold up over time, Tom Bin has a really great warranty and they love standing behind their packs. It is a USA-based production facility and they're always iterating and tweaking and repairing packs. Overall, these bags keep a pretty minimal exterior besides all of the zippers going on in the outside of the pack. Side note on zips, Tom Bin provides custom zipper pulls you can install yourself. Let's kick it off with the harness system starting at the top grab handle here. What's new here is that they've sewn this together, creating a more comfortable grab, and also it's more flush when you are hanging it on a pole or a hook or something like that. In older reviews, I've simply seen one thin strip here of that nylon fabric, However, this has been brought up in reviews and customers have brought this up as well. And Tom Bin has added a little bit more here for a more comfortable grab. They've definitely iterated on this pack a ton and it shows instead of coming up with bag after bag after bag, it's been awesome to watch them kind of iterate on the Synapse series. Each time they come up with a new iteration, it's getting better, more colors, more functionality, a little bit more thought through on the design. These little increments provide a huge gain in the long run. The straps themselves are quite simple. It's a dense padded foam here with a kind of stretchy like material on the outside of them. 
Below we have a properly anchored sternum strap with adjusters on each end of the buckles where they attach. There's also an optional clip for hydration bladder hose. Onto the bottom of the pack, there are two loops that attach either a waist belt or a hip belt, depending on if you'd like to use one of those or not. With a bag of 25 liters, your mileage may vary. We personally don't think that you need that. However, there are options if you want that additional support. With all the straps going on here, it is not a dangle free experience. And we feel that Tom Bin could make this bag even better if they added some elastic keepers or some sort of mechanism to keep those straps out of the way. We really hope they add these. Tom Bin is good at listening to their customers and iterating based on reviewers' feedback, so we wouldn't be surprised if we saw this in a future iteration of this pack. And lastly, there's a piece of nylon webbing at the bottom to attach additional accessories. There's a ton of internal organization in this thing, and overall, everything feels really well laid out, so let's jump into the details. One thing on this pack, it's hard to use each liter of space efficiently inside of this bag. The rounder, more turtle shell shape, and a bunch of internal pockets make it harder to utilize than, say, something more rectangular and wide open. Take a look at the Cotopaxi Elpa 28 liter or the Goruck GR1 26 liter if you want more of a giant bucket that you can pack and really fill out. However, if you like internal organization and a lot of smart design thinking and where everything is laid out, this is a really great option for you. Starting with the front pocket, it goes down about eight inches in depth, and that's gonna be great for anything that you want quick access to, the easiest pocket to access on the entirety of the pack. Behind that is a very deep pocket for a water bottle, and you can fit a pretty large one in here as well. It's placed in the middle to optimize the balance and the weight of a fully loaded water bottle, and also it doesn't look weird just hanging on the outside of your pack. There is stretchy mesh pocket on the sides and that Halcyon liner fabric as well. Although the Halcyon fabric is weather resistant, the stretchy mesh on the side is not. So if you are gonna put a water bottle pocket in here, make sure it's high quality and there is no way to have it leak. Otherwise, that's gonna get into the side pockets as well as the main compartment of the pack. Also, there is an O-ring at the top of the water bottle pocket. This works well with a lot of the accessories that Tom Bin sells, as well as anything that you just need to clip on for a quick grab. Next up, these side handles. These are easily accessible if you swing this bag around your body to the front from your back. The wearer's left features ample space, an O-ring, and a Halcyon pocket with three divisions. These divisions are good for pens, pencils, dongles, travel chopsticks, sporks, etc. You get the picture. The wearer's right is pretty much the same, except we just have a giant Halcyon liner pocket that's not divided at all. We've also been testing a keychain that we've attached to the O-ring. There's enough slack in the lanyard to where we can open doors while it's still attached to the pack and it's swung around to our front. And again, Tom Bin has a ton of additional accessories that you can add and customize to your liking. Next up, the lowest pocket on this bag is one of my favorites, and there is more space inside of this thing than you'd initially think. For example, we've got a MacBook charger, flat notebook, and Matador Advanced Packable Day Pack in this thing for size reference, and we still have room to spare. And there are three O-rings on the top as well. The main compartment of the pack opens up in a horseshoe fashion, not a full clamshell. This is the compartment that I have the most issues with. First of all, it's not as large as you'd imagine because of all the other pockets going on inside of this pack, and that's fine if you pack it right, but just note that. On the front side of the flap, there is a Halcyon pocket with a stretchier top. The main area of the pack is already decently small, and this divider thing seems a little bit unnecessary, not to mention that it kind of gets in the way as you're opening this thing up and trying to organize it and pack it. Plus, the horseshoe compartment doesn't allow you to open it completely, so it hangs out pretty wide on the interior of the pack. And there are two pieces of nylon webbing at the top as attachment points, just to note. On the backside, we have two additional looped attachment points. These are sold by Tom Bin depending on the size of laptop that you have, and they are a nice custom tight fit, which is great until you upgrade your laptop and you need to buy another one. This is designed very well and great in theory. You can easily slide this thing out when you get to TSA, just slide this laptop out, keep it connected to your bag, boom, you go through and it's a breeze. My friend Winston has used this on about 20 different flights and only one time has a TSA agent told him to completely remove his laptop. We like those odds. In the testing of this cache though, I have found it less than ideal for a couple different reasons. First of all, there is some depth to the fabric here, so it makes it a little bit harder to slide in and out. You kind of need to pull it forward to get it out easily. That could definitely change if the zipper went all the way to the back of the pack, 
We'd be curious if Tom Ben has thought about that in their testing and iteration. Lastly, if the main compartment is full, it's just hard to slide this thing in and out. So you kind of have to like separate the pack and then jam it down in there when you're done taking it out. Sometimes it's gonna be easier to just unzip this cache and remove your laptop from it, depending how full this main compartment is packed. Behind the main compartment, you can put an optional frame sheet here. We would definitely recommend that, especially with the 25 liter version. It gives the pack a little structure, makes it more comfortable to carry, and again, gives it that structure so it can kind of stand up straight on its own, depending on how you have the inside packed out. As for some other accessories inside of the pack, we've been experimenting with two additional pieces from Tom Bin. The first is the medium TriStar packing cube. The mesh material is great since you can see what's going on inside of the pack. The skinny form factor fits really well inside of the main liter capacity. However, since it's a little bit skinnier and the zipper is in the middle, it can be a bit of a challenge to pack because you don't have that depth on the sides to kind of hold everything in place. Secondly, we've been using the travel laundry stuff sack. There's some really awesome design thinking in here. Clean clothes go on one side and dirty on the other after you've worn them. The only thing is, is the cylinder shape makes it a little bit harder to organize your clothing inside, especially if you're concerned with wrinkles. Generally, we found the rectangular shape of packing cubes suited better for urban focused travel. At the time of this review, I have been testing the Tom Bin Synapse 25 for about three weeks, including a weekend train trip to Chicago. Also, I've chatted with my buddy Winston, who has been using the 19 liter version of this pack in black for over six months. Although I personally don't like the look of this bag overall, the more I used it, the more I started really digging a lot of the design thinking, the iteration, and the organizational features that come along with the Tom Bin Synapse. For a bag with a bunch of internal organization, it is hard to beat. So to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, there are a bunch of considered customizability options to tailor your organizational needs. There's a bunch of thoughtful design iteration that went into this thing, and overall it's a pleasant user experience. There's some great interior liner fabric going on here, one of our favorites to date. Onto some of the cons, the rounded size and internal pockets are not optimal for packing larger items. The laptop cache is clever, but not ideal with a full bag. The interior Halcyon stretch pocket isn't ideal and it can get in the way. Tom Bin puts a ton of care, effort, and detail into the decisions they make when creating packs and the Synapse 25 is no exception. They've continuously made minor improvements over the years that add up to huge gains that you can really feel when you're using the bag. Although we have a couple gripes within the main compartment and don't love the look of the pack, the overall greatly outshines these gripes and the system could work perfectly for you with the right gear and a bit of strategic planning. Thanks for taking a look at our review on the Tom Bin Synapse 25. Be sure to head over to packhacker.com slash newsletter, sign up for that newsletter and never miss an update. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you in the next video. Focus travel. Travel? For comfort. <laughs> comfort.